Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 370 of our YouTube channel and podcast, and I cannot be more excited to continue sharing with you guys personal finance topics that I think can be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. Well, it is New Year's Eve, right? And uh, I think that warrants me doing the thing that I think you would have expected me to do on New Year's Eve, and that is to give you guys uh, some New Year's resolutions for your finances. Okay? And I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can, uh, but I, I really want to uh, boil everything down into uh, these three different things that I think we all would hope to do with our finances uh, in 2022, and then talk about some different ways uh, that that may resonate with you individually. So stick around for a discussion of all of those things and more in today's episode. Before we get started, though, if you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcasts, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan, and that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions. And you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to this show on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, when a new year begins, uh, we all try to put out resolutions, right? We all try to uh, make goals for ourselves uh, in the new year. And many times it has something to do with, I'm going to read this many more books this year, or I'm going to lose this much weight this year, or whatever, right? Uh, but some people, and I think we all should, but some people have uh, financial New Year's resolutions. And I think that's a fantastic thing. I think it's fantastic to begin building goals for your financial life. And, uh, you know, whether or not that goal begins as a financial resolution um, is, you know, neither here nor there. But I think it is great to look towards the new year and go, okay, these are the things that I want to do specifically in my financial life. And I have really, um, you know, just boiled this down into three areas that I think every single one of us, um, you know, we have some type of connection to wanting to improve in any one of these areas or continue in these areas or get better or, or whatever, right? I think um, we all want to begin something. We all want to do something maybe a little different or a little better. Uh, and I think it falls into three areas with our finances. And those three areas are this, saving more money. So that encompasses investing as well. And we'll talk about that as we move forward. So saving more money, paying down our debt, and spending less money and or making more money, right? I think all of us fall into that place. And uh, I'll explain to you why I think we all fall uh, into that place and uh, exactly what that means for every single one of us, right? So let's just start from the back end because I think it is uh, the simplest of these resolutions that we would have for ourselves. And um, I think that our resolution should be very specific. I think uh, any goal that you set needs to have uh, some time constraint. It needs to have uh, some specific measurement uh, by which you can tell if you reach the goal or not. Uh, I think it needs to be a little audacious, right? It needs to be uh, you know, out there. It needs to be something that it's going to take some work to reach. Um, so these very simple you know, goals of uh, save more money, pay down debt, spend less or make more. I, I don't think those should be your financial resolutions, but I think our resolutions should fall within those specific areas. And I think most of our resolutions do fall into uh, those specific areas of our financial lives, right? So let's start with spending less money uh, or making more money. Now, in the grand scheme of things, right, in our financial life, uh, the thing that makes the most immediate difference in our life is our income, right? Uh, our income is the number one tool that we have to do anything else financially. Because if you're not making any money, if you aren't bringing in any income, how are you going to invest? How are you going to save? How are you going to give? How are you going to spend money on the things that you want to spend money on, right? And uh, I think many people have this view of their financial life that they're not making enough money. And I think Many of you may be right. You may be right that you have higher earning potential uh, than you currently are showing, than you currently 
uh, have coming in every single year, you know, month, whatever, right? But that does not mean that that's the only problem that you have in this area. I feel like way more Americans have the problem of spending too much money, not making too little, right? Because all of this comes down to how much uh, residual income do we have? And residual just means leftover, right? Now, how much residual income do we have? How much do we have left at the end of every single month after we pay our, all of our bills and do all of all of the things that we want to do, right? And so uh, increasing our income only works as long as uh, we are diligent about controlling our spending as well, all right? Uh, so I think a lot of people have financial goals that are specifically uh, surrounding the idea of budgeting, right? Um, and budgeting, the reason I, I you know throw that into the mix here is because budgeting is literally taking your income and then taking out all expenses and seeing what's left. Uh, and so if you're saying that you know, your problem is you don't make enough money or that uh, you spend too much, well, what's going to help you fix that in the first place, especially the spending part, uh, is budgeting and tracking your expenses, right? So if we want to be good at this, we want to be good at spending adequate amounts of money and not everything that we have, um, then we must be good budgeters and we must be good at tracking our expenses. We uh, have to be you know, hawks on our bank account, at least until we get some type of feeling as to what the normal progression of life is gonna look like in our finances. And then maybe we can take our foot off the gas a little bit. But especially to begin our financial journey, if you are not budgeting, you are not tracking your expenses, then you are falling behind. This is why the very first thing that I tell you to do in the financial action plan uh, is to create a unique monthly budget. And that kind of brings me to what I think your resolution could be uh, for this particular area, if you are not doing this already. Uh, I think your resolution could be, I want to make a unique monthly budget every single month this year, right? And then I want to track my spending every single month this year. Uh, and doing so will one, open your eyes because I don't think a lot of us even really know what's going on in our financial lives. We just feel like, Hey, if I made more money or if I spent less money, I'd be better off. Well, that's quite obvious, right? Cause you would create some margin. You would create some of that residual income, but we don't really take the time to see which side of the ledger is costing us the most. Uh, we do not take the time to properly resolve any type of uh, you know, error that may be going on in our financial lives. Uh, we just say, hey, I need to make more money or hey, I need to spend less money. Uh, and that's my goal. But I think if you took the time to properly budget every single month and then took the time uh, and the effort, because it's going to take a lot of effort uh, to track your spending appropriately every single month and try to stick to your budget, uh, then you're going to be way better off over a long period of time because you'll actually know where your money's going. And you'll actually know, do I need to cut back in certain areas of my financial life? Do I need to uh, go out and look for a different job or get more education or uh, get these certifications so that I can make more income? What do I need to do in order to create more residual income? Because once you create residual income, then you can do all of the other things that I call you to do in the financial action plan. Without residual income, there's no way that you can save. Without residual income, there's no way that you can invest. Without residual income, how are you giving? Without residual income, how are you spending, right? You need residual income, and the only way that you're going to get it is if you live on less than you make, right? You live, uh, as many say, below your means. And so uh, if you are not living below your means, then you are going to have a problem. And so that's why I think a lot of our financial resolutions are going to fall in this area of uh, controlling our spending, increasing our income, maybe, and then tracking right? What we are doing with our money, right? We are too asleep at the wheel uh, as a society when it comes to our financial lives. We think that our problems are things that are outside of our control, but many times our problems are very well within our control. Uh, we just don't want to take the accountability for them, right? So uh, if you want to create a financial resolution here, uh, I think it would be important to do so around budgeting, around tracking your expenses, um, I think it would be important uh, to put some specifics on it, um, and I think it would be important to try to stick to this if you want to turn your financial life around. Now, many people already have this licked, right? They already understand uh, how much money they spend every month, how much money they're bringing in. They're okay with the amount of income that they have. They're okay with the amount of uh, expenses that they have, but the things that they choose to do with that residual income uh, may be problematic. 
right? Uh, because just because you have residual income does not mean uh, that you are doing all the proper things with that residual income. And when I'm talking about residual income, I'm not just talking about um, you know, the uh, money that's left over uh, after absolutely everything that you do in your financial life. Uh, what I'm talking about is after you take out all of your expenses that you're going to have every month, right? All of those things that you must have, all of your needs, you take out all your needs every single month. And then from your residual, you choose to do any number of things. Like I said, spend, save, give whatever else right uh, now of course there is giving that you know i've talked about before we do right off the top right but if you don't have residual income if you're not going to have residual income how can you even give right off of the top you can't right you have to have money in order to do that and you have to know that you have the money uh, to do that and that is when it is very important to budget and track where your money is going but the rest of these uh, financial resolutions that I want to talk about are going to be based on the fact that we created some margin in our budget. It's going to be uh, predicated on the fact that we actually found some residual income. And once we find the residual income, then these other things can actually happen. So the next thing uh, that many people in America, of course, are, are wanting to do in a Fidelity survey found that 41% uh, of respondents expressed a strong desire to prioritize this in 2022, and that is paying down debt, okay? And I'll take that a step further. I want you to pay off debt. So if you know the financial action plan, um, then I'm just gonna you know, walk right through it with you here. Uh, but if you don't, then uh, you, know, you may wanna go watch some of the older episodes, listen to some of the older episodes, uh, and learn a little bit more, because this is my action plan for your financial life. And paying off debt is a very, very large part of that particular plan, right? Um, but all of the things that I ask you to do within the plan fall into these areas that I'm talking about today. So the first thing I tell you to do is unique monthly budgeting, right? Uh, which falls into what we just talked about. Uh, so unique monthly budgeting. Then I tell you uh, a month's worth of household expenses you should put away in emergency savings, right? So uh, we'll get to that here shortly. Then I tell you, um, you know, if you have a match offered to you by your company in an employer-sponsored retirement account, take advantage of the match. No more, no less, just the match, right? Uh, then I tell you to pay down all of your debt, pay off all of your debt other than your mortgage, right? Because mortgage is a very large debt, could take a lot of time, uh, and it's on an appreciating asset, all else equal, uh, whereas other debts are not. So pay off all household debt other than your mortgage, then... Uh, build up an emergency fund of four to six months of household expenses, then begin investing at least 15% of your income, right? But past uh, the paying down debt, um, it's really all about what you're doing with your residual income. But paying off the, all of your debt uh, requires that you have that margin in your budget. It requires uh, that you are not spending every single dollar that you have. Because if you're spending every dollar that you have, and then something emergent occurs, well, then what's going to happen? Well, you're going to go deeper into debt or you're going to go into debt that you did not have previously. Not to mention, uh, if you, you know, don't have any extra money or uh, if you, you know, are spending everything that you have, how are you going to be able to ever pay off the debts that you currently deal with? You're not, right? So you have to find uh, residual income in order to pay off your debts. Now, the problem that a lot of people have is that they have residual income, but what they choose to do, they choose to go into debt, right? So that they don't have to incur large expenses up front for things. And then uh, they actually have their residual income eaten into uh, by the fact that they have debt payments, right? You don't have money when you have debt, right? Uh, you actually lose your residual income on a monthly basis. You lose your ability uh, to give more generously. You lose the ability to invest and save more aggressively. You lose that ability when you have debt. So it's no surprise that so many people actually want to pay down and get out of their uh, consumer debt that's you know hanging over their head. Um, this is just such a big part uh, of our financial lives in America, right? Uh, we are a society of uh, individuals who owe other people money. Uh, but if you cannot be this way, then you can actually get to the point in your financial life where you can become free, right? You can have some financial freedom in the fact uh, that you have residual income to invest and save for your future. 
Uh, but if we're just you know bogged down with debt, we're never going to be able uh, to get to that other place where we are financially free. So when it comes to the resolutions that you should make with your paying down of debt, um, they need to be reasonable, but I would say this is where you could probably get the most aggressive uh, with your resolution, with the goals that you set for yourself, right? Because one, you're going to be surprised if you get serious about paying down debt, how quickly uh, your debt can go away right? How quickly uh, you can continue rolling payments into the uh, next debt and the next debt after you pay off debts uh, via the debt snowball method, which I'll, you know, uh, I'll highlight here, here in just a moment. But um, you'll be surprised how quickly you can get your debt paid off. And so uh, you need to be very aggressive. You need to be realistic, right? Uh, but have a stretch goal, have a goal that's going to take you uh, you know, the entire year, or, or maybe break it down into month by month, how much debt you want to pay off per month, or what specific debts you want to have paid off uh, by the end of whatever month or, or by the end of the year or whatever, right? And then if you have those specific goals laid out, uh, then you can be far more better equipped uh, to go and actually get this done for yourself. But if you do not budget, right, if you do not have some type of uh, tracking for your expenses and your financial life, then paying down debt is going to be useless because uh, you're not going to know where any of your other money is going uh, and you're not going to be able to set a realistic goal and actually attack it as aggressively as you could otherwise, right? Um, so paying down your debt is absolutely huge. And what I suggest you do to pay down debt is use the debt snowball method. Now, this is something uh, that is talked about all the time uh, by Dave Ramsey, right? Dave Ramsey, uh, one of the biggest voices in personal finance uh, on the radio, on YouTube, all these types of things. Um, and he uses the debt snowball method. I use the, the debt snowball method and I think it works. And I think it's something that uh, we need to employ if we are trying to pay down debt. So the debt snowball method, it means this, right? You have all these debts, but what you're going to do is you are going to line them up from smallest to largest in amount, not in uh, interest rate, right? And if you have like student loans, uh, where you have a bunch of smaller loans within the one big amount, then break it down into the smaller loans specifically. And what you're going to do within the debt snowball method is you are going to pay the minimum payment on every debt. So you start there, pay the minimum payment that you can pay on a monthly basis. Then you're going to take every other bit of residual income that you have, right? Because you have to budget. You have to make sure that you have extra income to pay down on your debt right? You're going to take every other bit of residual income that you have and pay off the smallest debt as quickly as possible, right? Put all of that money on the smallest debt that you have. Then once you pay off that smallest debt, you're going to take the minimum payment you were making on your smallest debt plus everything you were putting on that smallest debt in order to get it paid off quicker. And you're going to roll that into the next smallest, right? And then the next, and then the next, and then the next, right? Each one, uh, as you pay off the previous, uh, gets more and more steam because you are rolling the minimums uh, into it. And while we are paying down our debt, paying our debts off, uh, we should not be uh, saving any money anywhere, right? Uh, because we already have a small emergency savings fund. Uh, we should not be investing anything past taking an employer match, right? And the only reason we do that is because it is absolutely free money. So we don't want to be giving up on free money, right? And so we should have residual income in this place. We should have uh, the ability uh, to pay down our debt. If we don't, then we are spending money in unnecessary ways uh, or we're not budgeting or our income is too low and we need to take care of those things first before we get into this place where we are trying to aggressively pay down debt. But this could, of course, uh, make for some great uh, you know, financial New Year's resolutions uh, and I think if you are in debt, then making some goals, making some resolutions uh, around paying off your debt is absolutely huge because the quicker you can get out of debt, uh, the quicker you can be financially free and moving on in your financial life into uh, the accumulation and the building and the growth uh, of your wealth, of your net worth and of your financial freedom, um, because that's where you want to be. Right. And if you want to get to that place, paying down debt is going to be uh, a requisite step to doing it in the most efficient way possible. So do this first, right? 
then we can get to uh, the last set of resolutions that I want to talk about today. And I think a lot of people have these resolutions, but they haven't taken care of uh, those first like sets of things we're talking about, right? Uh, budgeting, taking care of your income, your expenses, tracking your expenses, paying off your debt, all those types of things. People just want to jump to this next thing because they're like, this is the key to being financially free. This is the key to being financially successful. And it is, but it is only after those other things are done. Because if you try to do these things concurrently or you try to just jump to uh, this particular set of uh, resolutions, then you are going to fall behind. And there's no surprise, right, that this was the number one resolution that respondents in that Fidelity Financial Resolution Survey said that they wanted to uh, make as a goal for 2022. 43% said that they wanted to save more money, right, in this new year. And this is not a bad thing. Saving more money is a great thing, right? But if we are saving money in lieu of uh, paying off debt, right? Or if we're saving money in lieu of uh, having an emergency fund. And when I say save here, I mean like investing in lieu of having an emergency fund or something else uh, along those lines, then we are doing things out of order and we could run into uh, financial problems. This is one of the reasons why I lay out the financial action plan in the way that I do for you all. Uh, that way you can do things in a proper order uh, and you can be efficient in building wealth and you cannot run into some of the big traps that a lot of people run into. Okay. Now, saving more money financially uh, for the new year in the new year uh, can look like many different things. And we'll kind of start with the first place where I tell you to save money in the financial action plan. And that is into an emergency fund, into emergency savings, right? If you do not have emergency savings, like I said earlier, the first thing that you're going to do when an emergency happens is you are going to go into debt, right? You're going to borrow money from somebody or somewhere, right? And that's a problem. We don't want to have to go into debt when emergencies occur because the sad fact of it all is emergencies do occur, right? Uh, so we need to make sure that we have money set aside for emergencies um, and I tell you one month of household expenses before you get all debt paid off. And then I tell you after you get all your debt paid off in the fourth part of the financial action plan, four to six months of household expenses, uh, you know, basically because if you lost a job or something catastrophic happened to your income, four to six months of household expenses should be enough uh, to get you along the way, uh, at least on a bare bones budget until you can get your income replaced, right? Uh, and so that should be the first place that we talk about saving money. A lot of people want to jump into, well, what about, you know, investing money for our future and all these different types of things. That's, that's great, right? We, we want to be doing that. Uh, but again, if we do it out of order, if we don't uh, save money in the proper places first, then we're going to be, you know, in, you know, some dire straits eventually when we need the money that we are uh, setting aside for ourselves. So, um, Save money into an emergency fund is going to benefit you greatly. But past that, I don't tell you uh, to save up money into a savings account anymore. I tell you to invest, right? Invest at least 15% of your income for your future. Max out your investment accounts. Now, this isn't the only place that you can save money, right? This isn't the only way in which you can save money. Uh, maybe you know that you are going to try to buy something soon, right? Maybe you're going to try uh, to buy a house, and you need to save up more money for a down payment. Well, that may be a particular place where you would uh, put away some more of your residual income into a savings account in order to get that done. And you know my rule, right? My rule is if you can keep the money invested for at least three years, you can invest your saved money, right? The, the money that you are saving up for some specific purpose, not your emergency fund, but uh, other monies that you uh, need to save up for a house, a car, or whatever else. But if it's less than three years, do not uh, at all uh, invest that money because the volatility of the market in the short term uh, is likely to make you lose money uh, where you wouldn't have lost it otherwise, right? So uh, we may save money up for a car or a house, uh, uh, any number of things that we want to purchase in cash. You can save up money for those things and have those specific goals. Say you want to have a certain amount of money saved by a certain time, that should be uh, one of your financial resolutions. Then, like I said a moment ago, of course, we want to be investing. Of course, we want to be building wealth for our future. But again, we must do it in order, right? Don't do this uh, when you don't have an emergency fund. Don't do this when you are not out of debt. Don't do this when you don't know how much residual income you actually have because you're not budgeting, because you're not uh, you know, writing things down on a month-to-month -month basis, because you're not tracking your expenses. All these types of things. 
right? It is vital. It is extremely important. It is the number one thing that's going to keep you uh, from, you know, having to rely on the federal government, Social Security, uh, or anyone else, your kids, whomever else, uh, when you retire. But you cannot do it effectively, and you cannot do it in a way that is going to be efficient um, if you do not do the other things first. Pay off debt, uh, build up an emergency fund, uh, have your, um, you know, your budget going on a monthly basis, tracking your expenses, all these types of things. But if you're doing those things, and if you've done those things, then of course, right, investing more money may be right on, on, on par with where you need to be. And if that's the case, fantastic. Right. Uh, but you need to, you know, think this out very clearly. You need to think out, uh, where do I want to be investing more money? Why do I want to be investing more money? Uh, what is that money going to be invested in? What type of account am I going to use for this type of investing? Uh, am I going to make sure that I don't hit contribution limits? Uh, is my income too high to invest in this thing directly? Whatever. Right. We need to think about all those things before we just say, let me just invest more into this account. Because for instance, if you try to invest more into, let's say a Roth IRA, right? Uh, well, the Roth IRA has a $6,000 per person per year limit uh, if you're under the age of 50. And then if you're over 50, uh, $7,000. Well, if you just want to invest more, you may think, oh, I'll just put more into the Roth IRA. Well, it may not be that easy because you may put more into your Roth IRA, but it's too much, right? It's too much for uh, the contributions that you have uh, for the uh, particular tax year that you're in. So um, you need to be very thoughtful about what that looks like to invest more money. You need to have a reason why you're going to invest more money and then understand uh, what the use of that money may be. Maybe uh, you're investing more money for retirement. Maybe you're investing more money for your kids and for their college or whatever. Maybe you're investing more money uh, in your HSA, right? Maybe you're investing more money into taxable brokerage accounts for whatever, right? Uh, but you need to know the reason for it uh, and you need to know the specific amount that you're going to increase your investing uh, and then give it some uh, you know, specific time limits, some specific goals, some specific reasoning and make sure that you do it. And one specific way that you could uh, invest more money and do it efficiently is by setting up automatic drafts from uh, your bank account. If you're trying to invest more for retirement, maybe uh, you know the automatic drafts from your check uh, into your 401k or 403b if that's the best option for you. Uh, so all those types of things can be done, but just be very specific, be very thoughtful about what that money should go into and why you are investing more money because without knowing why, then all of these resolutions are useless. And that's kind of what I want to get to here at the end, right? Is that before you jump into any of these things, yes, they all sound right. They all sound like the things that you're supposed to do. Right? We know that we want to spend less money or make more money to get our residual income up. We know we don't want to have debt weighing on us. We know we want to save more money. Right, uh, So these are obvious things that you would want to do. But if you don't understand why and you don't understand the details of your own specific financial situation, uh, then it's all going to be lost. Right? Think about you know, the years that you've gone and uh, said, I, you know, I want to, to lose weight in the new year. Right? And you start going to the gym and you start eating right. And then, you know, a couple months pass and you or less pass and uh, you fall off. And a big reason why people fall off is because they forget why they started doing it in the first place. Right. They forget the why or they never had a why in the first place. And so they stop doing that thing. So I don't want you to fall into that trap with your financial life. These things, some of them are very easy to do. Some of them are very difficult and take a lot of time. Uh, but if you can make some goals that are reachable but are difficult uh, and that are going to require some challenge uh, of you and of maybe your spouse or whomever you're uh, working with, right, then by all means, set those types of goals. Push yourself. Try to get financially better this year because that's what I want for you. That's what I'm here for every day, again, uh, is to try to give you actionable things to do, right? Uh, and so think about some financial resolutions that you want to set for your own life that may fall into uh, any of these three areas of financial resolutions. Uh, let me know what your financial resolution for the new year might be in the comments down below. And I'll let you know that one of my financial resolutions uh, for this year uh, is to make sure, and I, I'm not going to get into amounts and reasons with you, but uh, to make sure that I have uh, the proper down payment set up uh, for buying a new home because my wife and I are going to move uh, later on in the year. And so uh, the fact that we're going to do that 
um, you know, we need the proper down payment, buying a house, uh, you know, all those types of things, making sure we have uh, the proper liquid cash in order to do that above and beyond uh, our emergency funds. So that's something that's very big on my mind. I have some specific goals that I have set uh, and I'm, you know, keeping those things uh, thoughtful in myself. I don't want to just show all my cards uh, to you, but that's something that uh, I have on my mind and maybe it's something that you have on yours, but uh, feel free to share those things with me. And if you need any help, then uh, I'd be glad to help you walk through any of those places, but set a financial resolution, stick to it, uh, and maybe set multiple and stick to those and make financial progress in your life as we move into 2022. So thanks for watching this video. If you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcasts, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan or keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions. And you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to this show on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Money's No Object. Uh, I wish all of you guys a happy new year. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week as we continue uh, talking about personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. And we kick off 2022 with a bang. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.